happens to me. So, there we go. Hi everybody, welcome back to Not Feckered and Friends Coplay Thursday. I had uh, I had some other stuff going on. I had a lot of college coursework to pump on through. Uh, but today I'm actually joined by dun, 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 Spud. That's cheesy as fuck, man. What, you didn't like my dun 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 dun? dun? I'm just calling it cheesy. That, that, that's all. I go da 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 da, and it's cheesy. Apparently, CeeLo going ta 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 is music genius. Music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Duh. '90s callback. <laughs> I don't even remember. I, I was gonna say the year for that song, but I actually don't even know when that song came out. I was either I was either less than five years old or wasn't born yet. <laughs> Wait a minute, the bong song? Yeah. Oh my god, I hope you were born by then. Otherwise, I'm going to be really fucking old. Uh, and it was Cisco, not CeeLo. Oh, that's right, Cisco. Uh, it, uh, Cisco. It, it was really... Uh, oh, I got released 1999. Album Unleash the Dragon. Yeah, released on November 30th, 1999. Or wait, is that the song? Solo Studio Album? I don't know. Somewhere We're not here. Our, uh, Cisco, it was released on February 15, 2000, as the second single from Cisco's 1999 solo debut, Stadio. Studio album, Unleash the Dragon. Oh, okay. Well, e okay. So I was... Way off topic. Five-ish, six-ish. I still feel fucking old. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll tell you, though. My, the best memory I have of that song is a dancing uh, sumo wrestling hippo. I'm guessing you have never seen that. Maybe in the dark corner recesses of my mind where we do not like to tread. That was funny. Yeah. Anywho. Um, so yes, today. Um, I will uh, be doing a unboxing on a new miniature set. I have a ton of other miniature sets that I need to go through, but this is the one that we're going to go through today because I got to get through it. It's been sitting in a corner in my room, a uh, streaming room, just kind of gathering dust. That it has been. It, it has been. Um, I still not unbox mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I have here infin uh, the Infinity Code 1 Operation Caldstrom, as well as the uh, expansion Beyond Operation Caldstrom. This is uh, a box set that has, uh, if I just slide this up without bumping my thing, um, two armies in it. It is a definitely a, um, a starter kit. Um, if we, um, you know what? No, I'm not going to flip it around to show the, see the contents. It just, it, it's going to have, it's just going to have stuff. We'll open it up and figure out what stuff is in there. Um, uh, I'm sure Spud already knows. Did you, did yeah. you get this set? I didn't. Uh, I you did not. Like okay. It, but I just did not have the money. Ah, okay. So, um, Jeez, I can't even remember when I picked this up. Uh, would have been early. Uh, it was early this year, though. Early this year, okay. Um, because uh, it was, uh, they were having a special uh, at their store where a lot of things yeah. were nicely discounted. So, yes, um, to the point where I was very, I was tempted to either go this route or a uh, with the um. 
a two factions or a, th- a full 300 point army which is um uh, the equivalency of like a 2000 point army for like warhammer 40k age of sigmar which is what i'm more familiar with um so i mean it's it's a lot of, it's decent chunk like you know it's most what would you say most games are played at um well most games are typically played at um at, at least from what i've experienced about 300 but it's perfectly fine to do less like what you've got is about 150 roughly of each faction and that is going to get you through whatever you need and you know it, it's a good way to start the game learn the skills cuz the way i was taught i was just thrown into the 300 point games without the you know the 150 almost tutorial going in and it was a little regrettable that way cuz i'm still I I would still get a, like a little confused on some of the skills and everything, some of the actions that you can do because there's a lot of actions, a lot of things you can do. But in general, it's cool. I, I mean, think I, we... I had a lot of fun, but thank you. Cut out there, Spud. Overwhelming. Huh? Oh, yeah, you're cutting out. <laughs> yeah, well, that should happen. Yeah. Huh? Um. So yeah. yeah I'm sure um. You have to catch. Uh, hold on. Let me uh, scan my databanks and remember what you were saying. Um, you were uh lamenting about your three hundred point conversion into the game. Well, and not learning the skills. Well, one fifty, which is basically what you got for each army, the two. Um. That's a good way to start a game. Because I wasn't given the 150, I was tossed into 300. And there's a lot to take in. It, so 300 points was more overwhelming. 150 will get you a good foot in the door. Mm-hmm. And would you... Um, I know that when we discussed... Um, we discussed that uh, because it, it is... It's not just Infinity, it is Code 1. Um mm-hmm. We, when we discuss, when we're trying to like plan, like, kind of what army I would take, because, like, I wanted to do the military orders because there was a uh, specific sub faction in that, um, in that faction that, um, I actually had like the Knights Templars and Jean d'Arc, and, um, like, it was just, it was, it was Knights. It was, oh, it's so cool. I, I would, um, <laughs> Still kind of kicking myself like oh, I should have gone with that one, but um, I went with uh, the Caldrum because this one is a little a little bit more like From what I don't want to say it, I don't want to say it this way, but I I want to for a lack of a better term like buyer's remorse friendly because I get two <laughs> two factions with this one box and. From from what I've read about the code one, it it basically is beginner friendly. Like it's not throwing you into the deep end. A lot of things are more streamlined, but it's not as complex as if you're playing like a full game. Yeah. So, um. So yes, this one is the so yeah, it's 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 kind of I guess it's like a dummy down version, so like a skirmish version, so it's supposed to go a little bit faster. Um slightly streamlined rules so that if you ever did want to do the the mainstay game um which you've got a good play, foot in the door. Yeah, good foot in door cuz it plays a little longer and a little bit more complex. Um, now because it's been so long, I know it's, uh, the one faction is Oceana and then I and can't, Oceana. Re- and Pan Oceana, exactly. Sorry. Um, it's Pan Oceana and, oh, I can't, I can't remember. It's like Jing or Jing Zhao faction. What's the faction again? Oh my God. Sorry. It, 
I can't remember. Is it's is what is it? Is she Chen? It's Yu Ching. Yu Ching. There we go. So um, so yeah, it's like a bunch of like regions of the area make up like the faction because it's um, yeah, basically like I believe the panel is a lot of. I think they're more space oriented than really a earth based faction because we got Yu Ching, which is a lot of the more Asian kind of countries. Mm -hmm. So, like China, uh, you know, Korea, Vietnam, you know, uh, a, a lot of the more West Asian. Uh, Japan actually had became a faction unto itself. They recently left the Yu Ching. Oh, so no, okay, and that's the Japanese Sectorial Army. Okay, so they're like a whole new army that they're going to be releasing. Not a whole new soon. army. They're more of a sectorial, and a sectorial is you get a faction, and they're like a section in a faction. But they left you Ching, so now they're part of like almost like a mercenary uh, sectorial kind of thing. Oh, okay, so they're 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 the um. What's the one? The one? What's that one faction that me and you kind of like really digged about? Because it looked like a lot of bugs. Uh, had had oh, worm doctor um, in it. Oh yeah, uh, the one I play, combined army. Yeah, combined army. There we go. Yeah, so the combined army is you know is consisted of like the overall combined army. There's the Mord Aggression Force, the Sh Shatsvati Expeditionary Force, and the Onyx Contact Force. Those are Dude. those three are the sectorials of the com combined army. Yeah, and there's also like neutral, mm -hmm. new like, like, like mercenaries. Yeah. So, okay. the, and they're classified. Uh, they're classified under N eight two, which is non aligned armies. And it's sorry, it's not the Japanese sectorial army. It's the Japanese secessionist army because they seceded from Yixing. That makes sense. Um, so I opened it up. I know I did it kind of off screen, but it's kind of a big box. <laughs> you know, it's about a good, probably about a good foot. The terrain in them is very nice to have. Yeah, so. So we got plastic. Well, we got fancy box. <laughs> All right, let's see here. So, first off, I see colorful dice. Um, yeah, D twenty. Uh, so it's a. Factions. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Yu Xing. Yu Jing. Yu Ching. Yu Ching. There we go. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll get, I'll I'll maybe get used to to pronouncing those words, and then Pan Oceana. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I honestly didn't pick it up until i heard the actual like representative from corvus belly actually say the name of it so ah okay is it belly or bell eye uh corvus belly okay it is belly okay um so it i mean me you're off uh so, but you're obviously more familiar with like my miniature uh, background. I pl so I I actually originally started off with um, Warhammer 40k, branched into Age of Sigmar when it came out. Really didn't do too much with it, but it's a that that system is a, a D6 system. Mm -hmm. uh, they've incorporated some other dice at some points to like um, more like. Uh, health counters than anything yeah so the, uh, i was about to say they're basically counters yeah it's they're 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 counters uh, it's all iterations of d6s um so i see these are d20s it is a d20 game it is a d20 game so um so with it being a d20 game you're mostly rolling just like one or two at a time, right? Unlike 40k, where you're rolling like you're 4d6. Roll like 40 dice. Yeah. 
So yeah, they're they're specialized or not specialized, but like custom to the box. So they got uh the faction symbols uh on is it they got faction symbols on the one, which I actually do not like. Um, because usually ones are bad. You don't Oh, they're bad in this game too. Was that? They're oh they're bad. They're, they're bad. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well it's if we end up play, uh, if we do end up playing um, Cyberpunk Red Edition, um, mm-hmm. which I'm ho- kind of hoping that we can like work that out. Uh, ones aren't the end of the world because it's a D10 system, right? Um, but I actually do not like symbols on the one because I want to be super happy. So if I get, you know, if I roll a twenty, I want to see that symbol because it's like, ooh, I got a twenty. I got the cool symbol for Chow. <laughs> However, there is a, a one instance where it's a flip. When you're rolling uh, your, you know, to see if your armor, army, um, yeah, your armor actually saved you, you want to roll low. So a one is a save. Okay. I get you. Let's see here. We got um, 25 mil, 25 millimeter bases. Wait, am I saying that wrong? Are you saying that wrong? I have. I actually haven't like really had a chance to look at the um. Uh. So Corvus Bell hey. Belly um actually released their. In the actual infinity, sorry, you know what? I'm saying that backwards. Oh, you're saying it back, okay? We'll say... Yeah, because ones are good, sorry. ones are good, okay, right? Because, um, w- when you look at a stat line of a character, it's going to have a value, say, cl- your close combat is going to be 13, right? Yep, you want to roll under 13, so that's why a higher value is good, so then. You want your a lower roll. Mm-hmm. Okay. Your armor. You want your armor to roll over what they're doing for damage. Yeah. Okay. I believe ones are crits. Well, I could always do a, a look through again. Um, it it's been maybe about a year since I played. <laughs> I just uh, don't have anybody to play with, man. Yeah, you you live you live you look, kind of live a little far away <laughs> from everything. Yes. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I I would believe that. Um. Are these about the same size as the twenty five millimeter bases? I believe they're twenty five millimeter. 25 okay perfect i don't have a tape measure easily on hand but so yeah these are small bases uh i'd say about the size of a quarter and then um so usually if they if a company is using 25 millimeter base like that's the uh, initial uh like that's the lowest base size that you can put models on um they they tend to be human so if i were to play really any if i was to play any other model if it isn't human it's going to be a vehicle or mech and it's going to be on a a bigger base and oddly enough in this game the model is only there as a representation. Everything in your F4 actions rides on where the base is. Because it's yeah. it's actually like you got the thing called a silhouette. And basically, there are times when you'll have like a little silhouette card, you hold it behind it, you know, right where the thing was or is, you know, around the base. And uh, if it moved in front of a line of fire, you know, any point of that base, you can uh, a person can shoot it. 
So mm -hmm. the model is merely a representation. Yeah. So, so yeah, speaking of the model, so I'm going to grab this one. It looks like they are quality checked or quality controlled numbered. I got, I got up in, in the fact, 2000s. If you, would, yeah. <laughs> if you actually, um, because I've had a piece that was missing at one point, and what they did was they asked for what, like, the box number that it was in, and then which pack it was in, like, which little packet. Yep. So then, so, so they're all registered. Ooh, Nito Toledo. So I'll have to make sure I pay attention to that. Um, none of these guys are, like, have instructions to them, so I'm not going to go, like, clipping away and then just have a pile of bits because that's yeah, another good reason as to why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there is no instructions. So I'll try to uh, break my wrist, uh, pull it up. So these, uh, what are they? Pewter? I believe so. Yeah. They bend like oh. it. They bent like it. Great. So yeah, it's, <laughs> Obviously pewter, or at least some uh, soft metal, um, unpainted, uh, because it is metal, a metal model. I'll probably have to use automotive primer to <laughs> get a good... Actually, you can use regular primer. Can I go with automotive because it sticks better? <laughs> I mean, I, I have a buddy that, you know, he paints for a living and he just uses regular primer on it. Like, he made thousands of bucks just painting models for other people so mm. thousands i'll thousands. never get and i'll good. never i'll never get that good because um i have not done any painting uh at all of any models i have a few half painted models <laughs> Oh, that's, tried. I, I've, I have. So, what do I mean by half painted? Like, I'm, like, so I have a like. I have my one. I have like my first model ever painted. It's obviously not painted well. Um. But then, like a lot of like, and then because. Like I, I dumped a bunch of money into the models themselves because I played, um, for a lack of a better term, I I was playing uh, uh Warhammer forty k competitively, so I was, I was kind of buying a lot of lot of mo like a lot more models than what I should have, so yeah, I've I've yeah. have not developed the skills for I should probably put that back in. Um, I haven't just developed the skills of painting. Um, I had started doing some like minor painting um last year around this time um and i've only i only ever got as far as painting like two uh necron scarabs so like these are really 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 tiny models um it was more you know like slap paint and then dip a thin brush into some highlights or uh uh what is it washes so for recess paints yeah. And then that was pretty much it. So let me see if I can't find something with a little bit more um, and detail the so we can... typical method to paint these is actually called glossing. Okay. And the reason and the reason people do that is cuz in cuz unlike painting a 40k figure, a 40k figure has a lot of hard edges. Yes, they do. Infinity models have a lot of soft edges, so you can't really do like a lot of highlights on them so glazing like shifts color a lot easier it's a longer process because you do a lot more layers and you know they're more watered down but it has a better look yeah I'm trying to find a good model because i do have um some small stuff around uh oops we're gonna
I think it might be missing the dude. Or wait, that might just be a back of something. What number is this? Oh, come on, you there beast. be a total of minis. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to really dig on through. I was hoping to try to find something that wasn't too crazy. Let's see if we good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I won't uh the only reason why I say I feel like I'm kind of missing a model cuz uh that's all that's in one package. The, the back of a model I don't even know what that is. <laughs> yeah, see, this is why why instructions are helpful, because I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> well, when so you that's... begin to put things together, uh, a lot of things just kind of click as you're looking at them. So. Okay, well, I mean, like I said, I mean, I just got a slab of metal. So, I mean, and... you know, you had a... Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you understand how models work, because I recall someone... Um, who doesn't look at the models that are included, which I would say, look at the box, look at the models that's in there, and you can kind of piece together what you're putting together, because sight is a huge thing. Oh, yeah. I know a guy that we both know that put together some, and uh, he put arms on just the wrong people. Like, it did not, like, he, he gave uh, one guy, like, I think two missile launchers somehow, and that's not a thing that's in this game. Oh, I think I, I think I might know who we're talking about. <laughs> I think. All right. So, also has introductory booklet. Try to straighten that out. It's got some pictures, some information regarding the, um, like the lore. You see a word briefing, so this might also have missions in it too. Oh yeah, like uh, um, like a here. lot of those kind of things have beginner missions more or less. Like, yep. One of the things I really like is they basically build you up. Like they'll start you at one piece, one piece, both sides, and get you familiar with how it works. You know how you know your basic gun works and all that. And then well, like here, mission one. Now, now three guys, you know. Yeah, so we'll we'll do a quick look. So we got mission one: sweep the snow snow snowmobile hangar. Um. So introduction to this mission introduces a very simplified version of Infinity Code One's core mechanic. Um. You will need measuring tape, three twenty uh, d uh, three twenty sided dies. Three infinity miniatures per player, model train, and gaming table. Um, gives you some information on the unit profiles. Um, in this instance, it's the uh, Fusiliers and the uh, Jean Chi. Jean Chi? Ah, I'll figure it out. Jin Chi? <laughs> well, you're not great on pronouncing things either. To be fair. Yes, because I can barely speak my native tongue. <laughs> I mean, yes, there is that. Um, oh, yeah, uh, Jean Chi. Jean Chi, okay. See, I was right the first time. Well, I wasn't actually looking at how it was spelled. Yeah, Z H A N S H I. That's weird because I have my. Uh, my... Video. I have my stream on a, a three, like, three seconds, just so it buffers, yeah. just enough. <laughs> but I also have really uh, crappy internet. I know you do. I heard the stories, try to play Halo on Thursday. Oh, God, it was horrible. <laughs> I so, had, yeah. like, almost, eight, at a point it was, like, getting up to a three second, uh, three millisec, or, yeah, a three second uh, delay between input and actual happenings. It was unpleasant. Yeah, you can't play a first-person shooter like that. No. And we were playing on uh, he Heroic, thank God for not a legendary. Yeah. 
So let's see here. So you get you uh, measure base to base, not uh, you know standard yeah, like point in the base. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, when moving, you don't measure from you measure always from the same uh, same portion. Same so if you're measure, base. yep. So if you're moving from the front, you do not go to the back of the model. Basic, like super basic, like obviously you. If you're measuring correctly, you measure correctly. Mm. Uh, but however, they got to put it in there because there's. Uh, people, people, yeah, there are people out there who use rules to cheat, or the lack yeah, lack of rules. How, how, how bizarre uh, Age of Sigmar was from model to model. Yes, yeah, some some things closest like way off the base. Yeah, what was it? Closest closest point of model to closest point of model was the original uh, measuring schematic for Age of Sigmar. Uh that so that was really wonky so like it was so like spears most models have their spears um kind of off off the base by a good quarter of an inch and then because spears are breech weapons when they're in melee uh they can attack anything within two inches of them or base contact plus one inch or however you want to mm -hmm. put it and, so, you know, so sometimes to avoid that, like, even you did it sometimes, where you actually turned your models away. So that point sticking out was pointed away. So, you know, caused a bit more movement to be needed. Yeah, it was always, it was. Whereas it, in this game, facing matters a lot. Facing, yep, because we even have line of fire here. So target must be totally or partial within the trooper's front 180 degree arc. So, you know, standard cone of vision. Or standard sweeping cone of vision would be the better way to put it. Um, success value. So rules are made against the success value. Newark value resulting from applying the relevant modifiers to... The attribute used for a skill. Uh, let's see. The result is compared to the six value. Any result that is equal or less than the six value means that the skill was successful. So we. So this is you want to roll low, versus rolling high for uh, anything Basically else. Everything except armor save. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So if the result on the dice matches the success value, the roll is a critical. Uh, in a face-to-face -face roll, a critical always wins, trump uh, trumping any non-critical result rolled by the opponent. If both opponents roll a critical, the face-to-face -face roll is a tie, and both troopers fail. So they, anything face-to-face -face is if I have to roll something, and then they have to roll something to see if that something doesn't do what it wants to do. Yeah, so this one whoever has a better roll. Yeah. Without failing. Well, yeah. Yeah. Because if it's a critical, if you guys, if both people have a critical, they, everyone fails. So no, no ties go to defender type thing. Um, let's see here. Standard movement. You go up, measure up, measure forward. Um, let's see here. We got orders. So these are, or your order pool. So those are your actions per, per turn, right? Uh, more or less. Yeah. Uh, and you get the amount of order tokens based, uh, and you can, they can only be spent in that particular group. That'll be more detail later. But um, so like if you have three units, uh, th three soldiers out, and they all give you standard order orders, then you get three order tokens. When you spend one, um, then you have basically two actions to do, which it can be like a move, move, a move, shoot, or like a duck, move, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. It's kind of like 
I, I believe they're called half actions or something like that. Because there are some th th things that are, are like full orders that, you know, like certain skills are full order skills. Yeah, and then there looks like there's uh, uh, automatic reaction orders. I don't know if that's in the uh, base uh, or like the. It, um, is. it is okay. So uh, you got it's called uh, for short. It's called ARO, which yep. is you know, your response. So basically, that's if you have a unit, uh, and it's not your turn, but it's your stuff. opponent moves the unit in front of um by by any measure so long as you can see a portion of the uh you know s silhouette that would be passing by um you can take a, an action against that such as shoot it so basically one of the taglines for the game is it's always your turn you're just on the responsive turn you know what right. i mean yeah so yeah it's uh the AROs that um, we have our uh, BS attack, so probably ballistic, mm -hmm. uh, close combat attack, and dodge. Yep. Which is based on your physique. Physique. So, yeah, BS in order to clear a BS attack, the trooper must have line of fire, so line of sight. To his target, it must not be in base-to-base -base contact with an enemy before rolling the BS attack. Measure distance between the trooper and his target and apply the appropriate mod to his uh, BS attribute. Uh, let's see here. So we got a combi rifle as like the... One of your basic rifles. One of your basic rifles. I want to kind of bring this up. I wish that my camera had like a uh a digital zoom feature because mm -hmm. i actually have to physically adjust it <laughs> um so yeah this combi rifle um damage 13 so i'm guessing health pool for models mm -hmm. uh we have a b of three what is what does b stand for Burst. That's how many shots you take when you do it on your active turn. Okay. So when you're actively shooting something, you, it, roll, you uh, roll... You, you, yeah, you, you'll basically do the burst amount because you'll get like three shots if it's a three burst. So it'd be three... Um, I, I would roll three d20s then, right? Right. And you're rolling below your ballistic skill. Okay. Because it's a threat. Okay, so this is a threshold game. Yeah. Okay. So you want to be below that ceiling or threshold. So ammo N, so no ammo, or neutral ammo. Uh, I believe that's normal. Normal, okay. And then save and roll attribute arm, ARM. Which goes against the armor, because there are two okay, different armor. types of um, armor. Say so there's BTS... And then there's armor. Okay. And what does BTS stand for? I don't remember, but it's basically Sorry. like um, your it that that's gonna be your what's the word? No, wait. <laughs> Sorry. Um, your BTS is gonna be like uh, your specialty kind of ammo. Like there's a viral kind of ammo. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it, it's a specialty kind of ammo I mean, I mean there's a chart that you would look at to see you know what your what your shot is actually doing so oh, okay so then i see rage modifiers if it's 16 inches it's plus three between 17 and 32 it's minus three or no or is it right so, so basically if you're and mind you this is a take action first and then measure there's no pre-measuring yeah. So, uh, once you declare that you're um, ready to shoot, and then you you're taking your shot, you then measure to see how far away it is, and then you'll see which range band you're in, and if it's the minus three, plus three, or zero, or what have you, that let's see is added to your roll. 
Or deduct it if it's minus. Yeah. Right. So 16 would be, so any from two inches, because one inch would be considered base contact. Um, on average. Uh, so any from two, two inches to 16, it's plus three. 17 to 32 minus three. Uh, and then 33 to 48 is minus, minus six. And then if it's 96 inches away, which is. I mean, it's, it's a. Like what? Eight. Field, so. no, yeah. Like <laughs> so if, yeah, it's almost eight feet. Um, You're. You, you ain't hitting anything. You, you, well, you physically can't even hit it. I mean, your typical your typical ballistic skill average is, I believe, between eleven and thirteen. You know, like that's what you see most baseline units have. Mm. Ah, here we go. Um, uh, close combat weapon. Uh, this one's a a knife. Uh, this one has a saving roll of pH. Yep, that's your physique. Physique. Ah, okay. Because All right. Basically, you're going to be trying to dodge and not get stabbed. Dodge and not get stabbed. Gotcha. Unless you're attacking back, and then that's it, that's your face to face. If you're attacking back in melee rather than dodging, so basically, when someone declares something against you, there are options that you declare that you're going to do back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So we have. So let's see here. So this is probably the actual mission then. Uh, objective for each trooper eliminated at the end of the game. One objective point. Eliminating all enemy troops, troopers by the end of the game. Two additional objective points. So one one objective point for each model. And then if you wipe them, you get two on top of that. For each friendly troop that survives, one objective point. And then sustaining no friendly casualties by the end of the game. Two additional objective points. Friendly casualties, huh? Mm-hmm. How would it, you... It's, it's very easy to take out a model in this game. If you uh, see that W in their chart? Yes. That's their wound. Basically, if it's one... They take one hit and they're then in, in, incapacitated, and then they and when they're incapacitated, if they're incapacitated, it basically means that they're knocked out. Um, and if they're like dealt a final blow or there's a, a save you can try to make later on for like a doctor, if that fails, they die. They just die, and are removed from the table. Okay. So, but how would you get a friendly, sustaining no friendly casualties? Like, how, how, like, obviously explosions, explosive weapons. Well, that wouldn't also make sense either, because, um, there's no, uh, templates. There are templates. Well, there are but templates. You, but you cannot use it if it would hit your ally. So then how, so then you... Basically, no matter what, someone's going to score at least two two uh, two um, objective points based on this mission. What's, because of, it, sus what's it saying for it? It says sustaining no friendly casualties by the end of the game. As in no one died. Oh, okay. No, okay. Okay. Not like team kill. Yeah, friendly fire. So it's the end game conditions. This game ends when one of the players have no more troopers on the table. Victor goes by. Okay, so you got it. Regardless, you got to go. Um, you got to wipe the field. Or this one looks turns. because typically there's either uh, a game will only have three turns, or if the other person has no more. Because uh, it well, technically it is possible if in standard infinity it is actually possible for you to be fully wiped out and still win. By scoring objective well, points. Well, yeah, because this one, this this end game condition is game ends when someone doesn't have any troopers on their field. I mean, you should have that done within three turns. And a turn is both players 
have, have a chance as their actor. <laughs> so, um, let's see here. So we have. I'm a, I'm reading this like we're we're gonna have three f- uh, fusiliers and then three Jean Chis. Uh, going over we have a uh, a move, close combat or CC ballistic skill BS, PH physique, WIP, willpower, willpower. Okay, and that's a lot to do with hacking. Okay. There are other things that it involves, but you know, hacking is a big thing about it. And guts. Guts is pretty important. Because if you're being shot at and the like, there's a chance that, well, I mean, you, you have to roll. Um, I believe it is a uh, willpower roll to make your guy not drop to the floor or, you know, duck away. Make sure of that. All right. Oh, that's not okay. So that's not even using code one. Okay, so you don't need to worry about that. Yeah, this is just to look at um, code one. We'll probably do something different with the um, uh, the what you call it uh, with the actual well, rules. I just did like a quick look, and it and it actually said that that rule is not used in code one. So that's oh, good because okay. that's because that's one uh, thing that. I was never taught about in the first couple of missions simply because everybody's character had an ability where you didn't have to roll it. <laughs> okay. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got to quickly run downstairs. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. Um, Spud does have some other plans for tonight. So if he is gone by the time, uh, we get back. I'll just continue going as as is. We might spend a little bit more time um, looking through this book or, um, you know, I kind of wanted to keep this one kind of short and then do something else a little later tonight. So we might even just power on through it. Uh, but we'll play that section by ear. So thank you, everybody. I will be back shortly. And pause is...
I think it's that one. Nope. There we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Had a uh, slight break. Had to go help uh, uh, Althea with some stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure one of the dogs uh, had an accident on the rug in the living room. So, big old rug in the living room. Had to use a shampooer on it. That was fun. Sarcastic not. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, this. So, we were discussing um, various aspects of the. Um, the unit table a stat line um so this mov that's move right yeah so and if the, it has and, a and, and so you see two variables there the first one will uh, since when you do an order you get two basically actions within that order the first one will always be your first one so if you use move as your second action within the order you still use the first value but if you use a move move action then you'll get that second value added to the first so minimum four if you do a double move it essentially adds that second value two, two then you'll get four okay now you don't you, you wouldn't want to declare it all right away you would want to do a move see if anything happens and then a move because after you do your second move you don't get an action after that off that order and if you move and are shot at in the first uh, part of the order you use your second part of the order to dodge or shoot back makes sense So, hmm. No radiant. Let's see here. Let's see if there's anything more we can look at. Really, from this point on, it's it's all about just learning the game. Okay. Um, I guess, yeah, let's see here. Come on, you beast. So, five missions with different units. And then they a need, how to... Yeah, they're basically getting you accustomed to... Like, the first one would get you accustomed to your basic three units. And, and those are your front lines. So, it's just the basic gun of the game. Basic... Um, grunts of the game more or less and then each subsequent mission they're basically going to introduce something new like either sk certain skills or certain types of guns or hacking i don't know if they include hacking they should i i yeah i don't think they do um but like one will have you use this character now this character has a template so you get to use templates or something like that well, the fusiliers can um can become hackers. Yeah. So I they do have that option to be a hacker. So let's see here. Let's see if we get that. I don't know why they would have it because um can none of uh in the game. Well, there's nothing for uh the fusiliers to hack Currently, out of this no. box. Yeah. Yeah, so out of this box, there's nothing really to hack. Well, I'm pretty sure the Knight of Justice can be hacked. And that's just based on, if I remember right. Um, history. Eh. Well, why would they be able to hack? Would they say on the stat block? 
Infinity Gauntlet. Sorry, let me look at the army builder real quick. Oh, uh, it's mm -hmm. not so tall. So, and I don't know, so that's still the Winter Forest. And let's see, if I see the A's. No. Where is the knight? So, uh, the yes, the Knight of Justice is hackable. Mm. And during, and one of the things you can do with hacking, you can do damage. You can cause them to have like sight issues or you know anything like that. Let's see, you've also got the Noxin. Noxin. The Noxin is not. What was the other one? Oryx. You have Oryx. Oh, here we go. <laughs> and, the Some, orcs are, uh, and the Orcs are ha hackable as well. Interesting. So, yeah, they. they okay, so they do have. Uh, A, uh, a well painting guide, introduction to the hobby. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they do got s some instructions. Um, apparently, this is only twenty five points, according to their book. <laughs> Wait, what? It says Pan Oceanic complete army list twenty five points right up on top. The orc alone at minimum is like, what is the smallest point here twenty nine? Unless if code one has different point values, it might. It very well might. So, hmm. okay. Oh, I'm okay. Code one. Because yeah. here's here's uh, this is kind of cool. So you got Operation Maelstrom, Beyond Maelstrom, uh, Dire Foes, and then you got the support packs, support packs, action pack, action pack, Dire Foes. So that's a little like, and Dire Foes are basically like. A two unit and a high value target kind of pack it's, that comes with the mission. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so there's specific mission packs with models mm -hmm. for that mission. Yeah. Um hmm. I actually kinda like the setup, how they uh, advertise their their different products. And if you're mm -hmm. if you're if you play these two factions, well you can get this and you can get stuff for both. Or the dire foes, and but it's and it's so much cheaper to get into this than it is forty k by a lot. Yeah. I mean, honestly, <laughs> maybe, huh? <laughs> so maybe. Well, the only problem you'll have in the long run is like I got to keep buying more because I want all the other armies too. That's the issue. That's the one I have. Like, for... I want to buy all the models for this army. Not just for the sectorial, but all of the sectorials in this <laughs> army. Yeah. And now I've got, like, four different armies that bridge in different sectorials of the armies. So, you know. But basically, yeah. the game itself is basically a skirmish game. Yeah. The uh, good equivalency to this would be uh, for those who uh, play, those who are familiar with the Games Workshop product line, it would be like an equivalency to Kill Team. Yeah, very much so. So, um, so yeah, I am opening up now, or I should say, deplasticking the um, what does it say, uh. 
settlement scenery scenery pack. Oh, the scenery pack is fantastic. Assuming so it's a... one of the better ones. It's a thick board, right? Yes, it is thick board. Then you got some of the good stuff. Okay. Okay, so these come with instructions on how to actually yeah. put these together. So, okay. So let's see here. We got um, two sided scenery pack. So they're uh, both sided. Mm -hmm. So basically, like if you want to make one type of building, but they, you know, give you two sets of like this certain plat, you know, thing, you can basically have the boards flipped around so it looks like it's a completely different building, even though it's built the same way. Yeah, so what we got here is we have, uh, so just a, a good example we have here, uh, obviously billboard. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, hospital, save your, uh, save your soul, save your money. But if you flip it, it's welcome to Caldstrom, source of pride and wealth. And then we also have some other ones here too, which, uh, let's see here. So it gives some stats on the planet. Um, however, they are a little hard to read. Um, Svalharima, distant from star 0.95 AU, so um, light years. Orbital rotation 400 and, was that nine or zero? It was like a nine, 492 days. Uh, rotation 27 hours diameter everybody's one... looked at a billboard that closely before oh yeah we're we're getting into the <laughs> deep uh, let's see diameter 1.65 u units <laughs> is that a Whatever u the unit is it's that <laughs> and then surface gravity what is that one and g no, 1.6 G. <laughs> 1.6 times gravity, I'm guessing. Uh, no, it's it's it has a gravitational pull of 1.6. Yeah, it's basically what I just said. 1.6 times gravity. Well, I'm guessing the gravity. Well, I'm 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 guessing it's 1.6 meters per second gravitational pull which is actually a lot less than planet earth as that's 9.8 but they could be basing it off of earth's gravity 1.6 times earth's earth gravity Like they can Maybe. use Earth as a center mission because Earth is still very relevant in this world. A lot of fighting actually takes place on Earth. What? There's actually places still to fight over on Earth in the year blah 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 blah. blah, blah? Oh yeah, that's in fact where a lot of it takes place. Oh. Well, like Hak Islam is basically the Islamic religion kind of thing. All of the Middle East has come together to form Hak Islam. Yeah, and then we got a actually a pretty uh obviously it's paper, but it's a thick thicker paper, but it's it's a pretty detailed map. I would open up further uh but I wouldn't be able to fit it underneath the camera. You know, so I wonder if it's double sided too. That'd be, I believe that'd that be cool. I may have to open it up to see that, but I mean, I'm sure it is because I believe all that stuff was double sided because I've gotten some of that before. It is not double sided. The mat itself is not double sided. That's a bummer. It is a bummer. Um, I mean, the play area yeah. size is a four by four, so. A four by yeah, so it's relatively small. Mm -hmm. I just 
just need to store that. Keep it in the box. Um, alrighty, and then, so actually, you know what, because we aren't going to be able to do, um, oh, there are templates, they're just in, in that box that I got to yeah. pull it out, pop it out, um, but what I'm going to do is, so, um, you've got, I probably, we can't probably see it on the stream because it's, um, so far away and I don't have a, uh, good enough camera to have the, uh, auto zoom, but so because we don't, um, I don't want to really mess around with, uh, building the miniatures just yet. Um, I'm just going to quickly go through. We have for Pan Oceana, we have three fusiliers, one infiltrator, one orc trooper, one knock, who is kind of like a shotgun assault, uh, stormtrooper type guy. Boarding and shotgun. Then, yep. One knight of justice. Yu Jing, we have three uh, Zhan Shi. Uh, I'll probably butcher the um, names. Per, yeah. not, the names and pronunciation because um, Cantonese and Mandarin is obviously not my first language. Or a language that I speak or read. <laughs> uh, so uh, three Jean Shi, one Ju Jack, uh, one Dao Fei, uh, one Yu Lang, and then one Hund Hundun. Hundun. And it, and it should also be noted that uh, when when it comes to the models the weapon that is carrying can be kind of important because one weapon can have multiple loadouts within there, but you generally don't take a model with a gun and say it's a different gun. It's got to be that gun. And then there's certain circumstances where you can defer out of that. Right? Very few, so, but yes. Yeah, it's... uh. If they don't make the model, or the model it has been out of circulation for enough time, correct? Right, and or if the character is holding a close combat weapon, you can say it has this gun. Yeah, because it it still needs at least one ballistic weapon. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, basically, the gun is part of the profile of you know actually setting it up. Yep. Yeah. Yep. This guy won't open up for whatever reason. And it's not taped, too. Oh, gee, this is just in there. And I was hoping not to rip the box, but we did. <laughs> oh my god, this is like in there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I had to shake it out. So this is um, we're just gonna quickly go through because that uh, um that break went out uh, quite a bit longer than what I hoped, and I know Spud wants to uh get into some raids tonight for Final Fantasy fourteen, or if that got canceled, I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, I'm just waiting for them to start popping on. It should be soon. Ah, okay. Well, we should be done soon. <laughs> um, so this one, so I'll just go through the the thing. Um, this set includes a Varg split fire, uh, a Boig soldier with missile launcher, and one lo locust, uh, which I believe is just a, a sniper. And then we have the um. It's a little hard to see on the thing, but um, yeah, this should be the locust right here. It's got a sniper. Uh, Yujing is a uh, Shang-Chi invincible, which is uh, says it's a hacker. A Yamal with AP Spitfire, so armor penetrating Spitfire. Uh, and then a 
Jing Kuo, Kuo, Kyo, uh, with a multi rifle. <laughs> like I said, I'll get there. I'll get there. Probably not. <laughs> no, I don't really have that much hope. So we got a. Uh, probably this is a forty millimeter base, so that's probably the uh, the boy with missile launcher. So they're he's kind of a bigger guy. Let me see if I can't find. Yeah, it's probably this guy right here. Oops, someone's missing a quality control tag. Mm. Or. It is extra because it's a totally different number. And it's white. Nope, it's probably this guy's. Nope, he's got one too. So, uh, looks like, so yeah, Borg, or Boy, Boyg, <laughs> gets uh, set on this. So he's probably split up between multiple uh multiple baggies which might explain why i had the one baggie with like really yeah. nothing in it yeah um, that's the thing that happens so this is just a model this is just a box of models then additional soundproofing the... for later <laughs> yeah Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that quick quick unboxing. Um, we'll probably uh, I'll probably start researching soon on ca uh, different options for cameras, so that um, when we when I do end up uh, inevitably having streams where we're doing uh, model building and painting. I'll be able to actually auto focus and zoom in. Yeah, but I don't have the funds right now to do that. Uh, to pick anything up. So we may just be hanging out with this camera for a while, do various other unboxings. I'm going to have to do this a different way to get that all to fit in that box again. Um, so, kind of a lackluster unboxing. I should have planned for this a little bit better, but, you know, hey, I wanted to open it up, go through it real quick. Uh, although, apparently, an hour and 37 minutes and counting is uh, <laughs> quick. In quotations. Yeah, well. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I got duck out, though, so. Yes. So we're going to uh, end it here. Have a nice evening, Spud. Hope you do well in your raids. Here's thank you, everybody. Stop lagging. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody, who has joined, who stayed. Apologize for the extended break. Um, you all have a wonderful rest of your night. For those who are interested, we will be doing some uh, Mass Effect Andromeda pretty soon. Um, eh, probably start that in a, about an hour um, to make sure that you don't miss out on anything. Don't forget to uh, follow. And then if you are inclined, you can go through my channel to get to my YouTube, uh, or my Twitch channel to get to my YouTube page where you can also subscribe, like, comment on any past twitch videos and ring that bell y'all have a wonderful evening bye bye